Welcome entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs to our new delivery uh, class number five called SWOT analysis and this uh, corresponds to our course traditional marketing applied to the, to the digital marketing. Hi my name is Juan Yerena. I'm a marketing consultant and an engagement and motivational speaker. I'm myself an entrepreneur and entrepreneur and I hope that with this information uh, you can improve your business and start your you know your next adventure or maybe just uh, become a better uh, employee by being an entrepreneur and taking charge of the things that will help your organization uh, be a better organization for for everybody keep everybody happy and become a more productive uh, organization so today we're talking about the SWOT analysis as I mentioned before and the SWOT analysis is um, a technique that it will help us evaluate our, uh, our business, your business, and your competition, and to, to help us establish an action plan to define those goals to help us grow your business and avoid losing you, you losing a market share versus your competition. Okay, so so it is important. So it keeps you, it helps you uh, keep an eye on you know where you're at and what your competition is doing, but also looking at some other ex external factors that we'll be talking shortly. Um, we'll have this approach in this class uh, from a traditional marketing, traditional marketing perspective applied to uh, the digital marketing, the digital world as we have been doing in the past. Um, so that's what the SWOT analysis is, an analysis of external and internal factors and an analysis of weakness and opportunities for your business. Now, what are the internal uh, factors? Uh, well, mainly are the ones that uh, you can control the internal factors are uh, as strengths and weaknesses. Okay, so each one has its pros and positives, and it's uh, also its cons or negatives. Um, but it ba basically focuses on the internal factors, um, things that you can control, things that you can correct, things that you can improve, that you can take charge of. Okay, and based in mainly that we depend on ourselves. Okay, uh, you can built on your strengths okay that's a very uh, intuitive and the same on your weaknesses if you know and you recognize what your weaknesses are well it's more likely that you have an opportunity there and a chance to start um, developing a plan to minimize those weaknesses and and be able to to make some change okay so as a strength we can probably mention some examples as fast return on investment you know, uh, shorten our time in the market to, to get new products, uh, you know, for, for a gross profit percentage. And our weaknesses, you know, can be different things, but kind of let's, let's dig in a little more. And then we'll also talk about our external, external factors. We're going to cover, uh, you know, the internal and external factors uh, in more detail, uh, you know, shortly, for sure. Um, so having said this, uh, the external factors are the opposite from the internal. You can definitely deduct that. And those are things that we can control. They're external to our organization that go beyond our control, be beyond our, you know, uh, the things that we can, uh, you know, actually uh, control. So it is not really up to us, you know, and, and we'll see what those are and what those typical examples are. But what, you know, although we can control this, uh, different events or you know different uh, things that are happening in, in our uh, surroundings uh, and that affect our businesses and maybe our supplies or the job market or you know the economy in general we can try to mitigate or try to be prepared for so if we keep an eye on you know get a pulse on uh, the economy and if we we are being informed on you know what's happening with politics uh, you know how is the uh, you know the industry that we're in uh, how is it uh, the trends are they is it growing you know is it uh, stagnant is it uh, decreasing you know all these different uh, things that can happen and it's our job to keep an eye on it then we can possibly mitigate or try to minimize or at least to be prepared for these external factors that we can control sometimes the external factors can be positive and we need to take action uh, and it can be uh, in the form of opportunities the same for these um, uh, threats and the threats basically are uh, you know the opposite where uh, what it will happen is uh, you know there are some things you can control that might be affecting your market or your business uh, and yeah and in reality sometimes we just can't um, control that um, 
but uh, in many cases at least we can be prepared for um, and but we'll talk more about that uh, uh, soon so the SWOT analysis is like a four quadrants where as you can tell here uh, we're talking about the internal factors uh, the two top ones uh, which is the strengths and the weaknesses the ones that you can control and then the opportunities and the and the threats uh, which are in the second lower bottom of the screen which are our external factors and those are the ones that we can control okay so let's let's continue talking about this so we're, we're gonna focus on the first one of the fourth um, you know um, areas okay and the first one here is the strengths so for the strengths we're going to to try to answer this question okay that's I guess the sim easiest way for for me at least to relate with the strengths is what are my advantages what are your advantages okay so you can try to apply that to your own uh, what are your advantages over your com over your competitors okay and we can be applying this to a business that already exists a startup that is just getting started or um, you know a business idea or even to your own personal branding okay what are your advantages over your competitors okay so if you can answer this question then you can focus on a little bit of that and, and try to set yourself uh, apart and and try to focus on those um, you know strengths that you have to create an opportunity for you to to get more market share and to be more successful at what you want to be uh, so in order to do that uh, and for the strengths we can uh, you know kind of break it down in, in a few more um, four different areas or five different areas and the first one is uh, brand recognition okay and brand recognition uh, we can see and and analyze where we're at uh, in the market so for brand recognition we must be leaders okay so in order for you to to sell more product at least people will need to know about you and will need to you know uh, get some you need to get some sort of a credit from from your customers from your clients that you uh, do perform a good job that your service is top quality that your product satisfies the you know the expectation or that it solves that particular problem so you need some brand recognition you need to be a leader in your area and your niche uh, you have to be in that industry space that you are uh, you know uh, moving in where you're actually doing business okay in that industry sp space you need to try to be a leader you need to work towards that so if that's something you already have then you are uh, you know that's one of your strengths then that's a possibility for you to build on that okay and then you must use that brand recognition if we have it okay so if you have brand recognition already you should be using it um, to your advantage for your business so let's kind of talk about an example so let's say you're in the market for a long time let's say you've been in business for 25 years okay or let's say you have um, you know uh, reach uh, you know hundred thousand customers or a thousand customers uh, so if you have some brand recognition people know you've been there before people give you the credit knowing that you have done that in the past then that's an opportunity for you to to use it as part of your marketing campaign and let people know you know 25 years in business 100 years in business um, we are the first ones to be doing you know such a thing you know a or b or c uh, the same thing uh, with the uh, you know the, either the amount of the customers or the number of transactions if you reach like a you know 100,000 uh, satisfied transactions uh, customers with transactions then that's great if you get like 10,000 reviews if you get uh, you know 50,000 followers on on uh, Twitter you know things like that those milestones that other business can just can buy from you know anybody else that's just so hard to replicate if you have that then you have to use it okay uh, another strength that we can focus on is um, economic muscle okay in economic muscle it means is are your uh, financial resources to help you uh, grow your business uh, and you can do this in many different ways uh, let's say you already have investors you uh, have ways and means to you know with your, the amount of followers that you have to create a crowdfunding campaign where people will respond quickly to whatever goal is that you have that is going to satisfy some sort of a need for somebody else 
And if people are aligned on that and they support you and they back you up, then that's a strength for you. You get economic muscle. Uh, this might give us an, uh, you know, an edge over what other competitors may have access to or they might not if, it, if there's another company that is doing something similar to what you're doing. Uh, but they don't have the economic muscle they might not have the means to to be able to you know invest in a new product or to uh, you know come up with a different uh, better improved service or better improved product okay so this uh, it all depends on the type of industry you're in uh, but if we're talking about something that you have uh, access to you know to a, a big funding for buying a new equipment that will help you you know make these shoes you know, faster and turn them around quicker and produce them in higher quantities and yield, um, you know, faster, uh, you know, uh, return on your investment, but also by allowing you to produ produce uh, products faster uh, with the same quality or even better quality than your competition because you have the, econo the uh, economic muscle, the uh, economical means to, to, buy, to get the equipment uh, and you have good credit line, you have investors that are backing you up and all that, then you have an, an advantage over, over your competition. So that's another strength that you could focus. So for example, if you're a digital company that, that you already have a, a you know a big customer base or, or you know, uh, you probably have um, uh, in your competition other startups that might not have that, okay? So if you're a digital company that already have a customer, customer base, well, then that's great because, you know, any initiative, even if you are looking to release a new product, then you can just kind of go back to that uh, big uh, customer base that you already have. They can give you information, they can give you feedback uh, that others might have a hard time just trying to get it. Okay, so that's just an example of another th strength that you can use to, to your advantage. Market penetration, okay? If we have market penetration, uh, well, that's definitely, uh, you know, if you have a, a, a big uh, market penetration, a big uh, piece of the pie, uh, on that industry you're in and your area or if you're digital you know in that space and that industry well then you have a, an advantage over other people too uh, for example you have a captain audience of 50 percent of the market you know that's just so hard to to get and it's just so hard to compete not that it can be done uh, but other um, other businesses are going to have uh, to fight for the other 50 percent and it's just going to be much harder for them to to be able to capture some of your already uh, captive audience um, of that market that you own uh, or that you have at that moment. Uh, bec just because uh, you already have you know, a big portion of it, then that means that you can talk to them, that you can, if you do things right and you do get feedback from them and you offer them good service and everything, you know, it's gonna be hard for others to erode that um, you know, market share that you have. Now, I'm not saying that you have to get too uh, complacent about you know, just being in a, in a position where you got it, you, you made it, and you don't have to worry about anything anymore. That is not true. That's not what I mean. What I mean is that you already have been doing things right, but you need to continue doing so. But by having this uh, captive, uh, captive audience, then uh, that just gives you more power and more strength to, to be able to pull, like I said before, new products or, you know, uh, get uh, mar more market research done and have a good response from, from your customers if you know what they actually need, if they're telling you. So, I mean, you see that big difference. Now, the next one is experts. So, for instance, uh, if we're an expert on a particular subject and we have many followers, isn't that a strength? Of course it is. Because uh, if you have the know-how to, let's say, uh, you know, do inventory or handle inventory, and you can uh, provide that know-how to other people that are just kind of getting into that space. So they have a different business and they need, uh, let's say, consulting on that uh, particular area that you, uh, that you know real well, that you have a lot of expertise, that you have the know-how. Well, wouldn't that be a strength for you versus someone that is just getting started? It's the same with, uh, you know, knowing uh, how to deal with supply suppliers. So if you have a... a uh, expertise on how to manage you know relationship with your vendors how to negotiate that will be an strength that you can use to your advantage also for your business okay so you have to see what your strengths are and even if you are um, you know you have a uh, let's say a retail business uh, and then you have a much better knowledge of your customers but at the same time of your employees 
or your co-workers and also uh, from your suppliers from your sellers and you have that know-how you get you know them in advance you have a relationship with them for several years you have developed uh, this uh, trust and, and working relationship based on a mutual uh, trust where both are uh, in a winning win-win relationship relationship then uh, you have a strength because uh, you know those vendors will be probably more likely to to help protect that market that they already benefit from and that they help you out by kind of raising the bar and making making it a little harder for other companies to actually compete against you and you can see this you know for instance there are companies that once they get a uh, you know a few customers uh, let's say i know of this company that they make um, lotions and soaps out of uh, like natural herbs and plants uh, base plants they um, once they get into a particular area and they get enough retailers that they feel is uh, en enough uh, you know of the size for for that area they don't take any more retailers into that space so what they do is uh, they just turn them down because they know that in order to keep these uh, other accounts healthy then uh, they just can't saturate the market with their own products in their, in, the, in their own area so they work with those uh, customers you know with their uh, wholesale customers of theirs to keep a healthy relationship so so then they work together to protect that market for for them you know so it can be uh, also if uh, you have a you know a big account with uh, I don't know if you have a bakery and and the guys that sell you the uh, the flour uh, you know and all the uh, fixings and supplies um, they might make it harder for somebody that wants to move in next door you know that is going to be your competition because if the moment they get in and then they start growing they might be taking some of your business and it will you know cut on your sales and it will also uh, cut on what you order from your wholesaler as well so so when you establish these partnerships that you you have uh, a strength that other businesses and other uh, people or other organizations um, you know it's gonna be harder for them so you need to focus on what your strengths are to to be able to make a difference your community okay so if you have a community that supports you that follows you um, then you're you know right there if you have um, a community that um, that knows uh, what you're doing that you have asked uh, feedback from them in the past and they have actually uh, provided you with that feedback with the things they need and they tell you the things they like and they are constantly following you and supporting you on on your uh, let's say your social network presence uh, once you release a product that fits those needs for for those folks uh, they're probably more than likely to buy it so then you have a community that backs you up a community that supports you let's say you need to uh, to, to replace uh, I don't know if you say you have a coffee shop and you need to replace some of the equipment to to make new coffee because their machine broke down well you can maybe start a crowdfunding and right away you can have like thousands of people that are already following you chipping in some some money 10 50 dollars because they love your business so much and they love what you do and you treat them right that they just want to have a space to go to and they are so attached to you uh, and to your business and to what you offer that they want to help you uh, keep going so all of a sudden you can just you know access to um, investment if you have the brand recognition and you have a community that stands stands behind you so so these are you know some of the reasons why your strengths are so important and, and sometimes we don't give uh, you know enough uh, value we don't think they're worth enough that we might oversee these opportunities or, I'm sorry these strengths and we not, don't use them for for our advantage now we're gonna talk about the, the weaknesses and the weaknesses are the second um, square on the top and those are the ones that are uh, internal factors those are the ones that we can still control and we'll try to answer this question okay what are we missing okay and what my comp competition what are my what are my competitions strengths okay so what are we missing and what are my competitions strengths okay so Again, for these weaknesses, uh, it's going to be basically uh, the opposite. Like we said before, um, your, your first uh, weakness, it might be, okay, what if you don't have enough recognition? Okay, no brand recognition. Nobody knows yet who we are. Maybe we've been around the block for a while, but we haven't done a good job at promoting our business. Nobody knows about us. Or maybe uh, we just happen to be in a, you know, a smaller street where we don't get enough traffic, so nobody knows who we are or they know what we sell but but they don't know what we stand behind and what our values are 
and maybe uh, we you know support uh, organizations you know with uh, like the local food shelf or other groups as well within the school system or you know other things that are aligned with your values and your vision as a business maybe you're a socially responsible business but people don't know the things that you're doing and they don't know that when they support you they're also supporting these organ other organizations so if you don't have brand recognition then that's a weakness well you need to come up with a plan and how to fix it but we'll talk about that in a little bit the next one is uh, if you don't have an economic muscle okay if you don't have economic muscle well we might have an idea but we have no money okay you might have the greatest idea but you don't have the means and the resources you have no access to capital you don't have friends to borrow from uh, you don't have a line of credit you don't do you're not good at fundraising or you're not even interested okay so you might have an idea that it might be a good successful idea winning idea but you have no money so that will be just a weakness because your idea by itself is just not gonna happen uh, you'll need to have the means to also make it a reality so all of a sudden if that idea you can make it work with your uh, economic muscle that will be a strength but uh, because if you don't have any economic muscle then that can turn simply into a weakness now if the weakness is that you don't have any uh, let's say you don't have market penetration well that's probably because nobody knows who you are so you know again uh, how can we fix it how can we improve this uh, and again remember the other question is what is our competition doing right so if we have no market penetration well maybe that's the next thing that we need to work on maybe we, we can turn this weakness into a strength and that's why it's important that we realize and sometimes um, I, th I see this happening all the time with uh, entrepreneurs where we follow so much with our own idea and with our own project product or our own service and we think it's just the greatest thing but uh, it's not viable or we just don't do a good job at promoting the right and telling our story in a good compelling way that uh, you know maybe we just focus on selling the product and we're just not selling our story and then nobody really falls in love with our product and we don't understand why we just refuse to see what our customers are seeing we refuse to listen to what they're telling us or we don't even pay attention that they're not telling us anything okay so if you don't open yourself to learn what your weaknesses are how are you going to get a chance to improve it it is really important that you have to recognize that these weaknesses actually can be opportunities to turn them into strength and all the time then you have a winning uh, situation from something negative you turn it into something positive okay so it's not only about focusing on your strengths and forgetting about your weaknesses uh, because everybody has strengths and weaknesses there's always something that we can be working on but sometimes it's better to find the weaknesses to improve and turn them into a strength and you know all the way all of a sudden you have a you know better business uh, a better plan and you know and then a byproduct of that uh, of your effort your passion your love that you're putting into your work and, and into that business then you're gonna see the results of you know harvesting uh, you know the uh, rewards of economical rewards of that as a consequence so let's say we are no experts okay we are we're not experts at what we do well we don't know even where to begin well then maybe you need to find uh, maybe you're one in one of those situations where you want to do something but you don't know where to start maybe you uh, saved some money or you inherited some money or you won the lottery and you're like well I don't know what to do uh, you know I just don't know what I'm good for well that can be a weakness okay so you need to know what your passions are you need to know where your heart is and you need to focus okay maybe the reason why you're not an expert is because you're just trying to do everything maybe just it's just because you are just trying to to do it all and you haven't been able to pick one thing that you really like and and yes there's many talented people that can be doing other things but we need to to uh, learn to delegate we need to learn to to trust other people we need to learn to empower other others to do things so they can free up time for us to do the best that we're you know the the, the, the things that we're really good at the, the things that we're the best at and we, if we don't learn to do that then we're just probably gonna be stuck on the same spot not getting anywhere okay and sometimes we just get into this position where we're not experts because we just don't know where to begin and the next one it will be no community right if you don't have a community you haven't built a community then you have you don't have support you lack support from a community 
and you can have all these great ideas in your mind and maybe all these great products that they look great that they sound great and everything but you haven't been able to test it you haven't been able to ask anybody and when you come out to the market then all of a sudden you make this huge investment and believe me this happens all the time millions of dollars spent into all these new uh, startups and and products and inventory built and you know a lot of stuff and all of a sudden you know nobody's really interested why because you never really had access to a community that could support you that could give you a good uh, market research or benefit now you know i always support and i say well first um you built then you grow and then you monetize those are the three steps that i recommend for anybody so first you need to build a community you provide information you provide resources you teach them what what uh, you know uh, that it will help them out to get to where they need to get and you do this because your interest is in helping others okay so you first you build a community and then you try to grow this community by you know uh, having relevant information useful useful information again that is authentic from you and that is honest that you're sharing and then people are going to recognize that and people like to help others as well so they're going to start sharing you know that content that information that solution and also your your network is just going to grow it's going to explode so you grow uh, you first your build then you grow and then uh, once you have that community established and you have that the followers and and you know the community that are connecting with you and they're following you they're seeing what you do and they interact with you then it's probably a good time to start uh, monetizing okay not the other way around you don't just start community start monetizing to later on grow it it's just so much harder and not that it's impossible but i think the natural way and uh, to me the logic just tells me the first you build your community then you grow it and then you later on can monetize to do the things that you love okay so it is important that you recognize your weaknesses now how do you fix it right that's the question how do i fix my my weaknesses i know if i have strengths well that's great i just need to work on those and continue building on those but if i if i have these uh, weaknesses well how do we how do we go about that so let's say um you have no brand recognition well that's the first thing you need you need to first fix it now you need to start having ways to tell people your story you can start creating content with inbound marketing you can be uh, sharing uh, you know information that will be valuable for people to attract to come to your website uh, to come and, and get in touch with you to fill out a contact form to um, you know talk to talk about you on or your product or your brand on on the social networks if you have a, a company that is uh, you know creating products and services that is helping you know non for profits for instance then you know just tell the story just have uh, someone if you if it's not you well at least just have someone that can help you you know that write that story for you and tell your story the best way for the customers to understand what you're all about so that's the first thing you need to start is like fix it now don't wait any longer and uh, there's like different you know different things like if you are uh, you know like selling services or maybe uh, just um, I don't know selling content uh, you know if you make apps or you know you do things like that then uh, you can probably have freebies okay you're running classes you know you're making creating new courses uh, for people to live better or to eat better or whatever the case might be well then maybe just start a blog right away you know and just have a good theme be specific on your theme uh, and you know find that niche that is going to be following you and all of a sudden just kind of start getting people recon people's recognition for your brand and knowing what you do if you don't have any economic muscle or no economic muscle well how do you fix that right well maybe just start looking and learning about crowdfunding find investors you know go to organizations that will help you connect with investors there's many angel investors that are looking for great ideas for people that are passionate people that have the time and the heart and the ideas but they are lacking the money so there's a solution for it but you just need to go out there and need to get out of your comfort zone and get out of your you know just that one desk that you're sitting all day in and out and and then just start looking for investors you need to be proactive you need to be where they are to to get them you know again to tell them your story to tell them why you need the money for and how that's going to solve people problems and why your project is great and and you know maybe you already have a business and you need to just uh, you know um, amplify your capacity um, to help more you know to, to serve more uh, people or to sell more shoes or you know whatever the case might be to produce more product and to to be able to uh, you know satisfy your wholesale orders that if you go mainstream for some reason and 
and well you don't have the, the the power to do that you know well you don't need to go to like a shark tank uh you know i mean you know who those are but i mean there's many angel investors that are looking for great ideas again people with their heart and their mind into uh, doing these products and projects and and they give it all and if that's one of you you know then uh, then you got good chances to find investors that, w that will believe in you but it's not easy you just have to work for it and and, and then the other one is uh, you know find family you know is your family can can they support you uh, you probably don't need a million dollars to start maybe maybe yes maybe no it all depends right but uh, but at least you can start uh, getting a little more uh, um, would say uh, a little more active and a little more aggressive at uh, finding ways to finance and be able to obtain more economic muscle if you don't have it. What if you don't have any market penetration? No market penetration? Well, find experts, right? Learn and find a partner, okay? Maybe uh, you're not good with sales. Maybe, maybe you're not good with marketing. So then why are you trying to do it all? Maybe you have a lot of uh, knowledge and know-how about engineering and that's where your passion is. Well, that doesn't make you uh, the best salesman, right? And that's probably why you're lacking uh, you know, uh, market penetration. Find an expert in that field that you're missing. Maybe uh, you love uh, selling and you love uh, you know, apps for, for smartphones, for instance, and, but you're not a good programmer, and then you're trying to learn HTML, CCS, you know, um, Java, script, and all that, and, but you're not a programmer, and you're spending a lot of time just trying to learn, and you can't focus on selling, and, th and that's why you're not growing. So you need to find experts that will either uh, do it for you if you can um, figure out a way to you know kind of create a new partnership uh, or or if you can hire him or uh, you know find a, a source that you can trust that is reliable that is proven uh, to have results and learn you know like if you don't have the knowledge well learn well you don't know anything about marketing well you're educating yourself here right now well, you know that's a great credit for you do you have somebody that works in your marketing department Maybe your partner is great at, uh, again, like I said, uh, engineering, or they're programmers, but they're, or they're account good for bookkeeping and, and that, you know, everybody has uh, talent. And know that these skills can be learned, but you need to learn, you need to spend, you need to invest time and sometimes money as well to be able to reap the benefits and, and obtain, you know, 10, a thousand, uh, you know, a million times uh, return your investment. And learning is the best way to do it and if you don't know how or you can recognize your own limits or you just don't have the time well then uh, just uh, find an expert to help you get more uh, uh, market penetration uh, we're not expert again the same thing find the experts learn or find a partner okay uh, the same the same solution for both if you don't have a community well what are you waiting for just start now build you know a new community uh, start a blog open a Facebook page, you know, the, wh who's your demographic? Is it the millennials? Is it Generation C? Is it a baby boomers? Is, you know, who are they? Well, just try to be in that space, do a little research. If you don't know, again, you're not an expert, then just go and find one and get a, you know, a, a, a someone, a consultant that can help you uh, get started. But don't wait, just start now because that community can really set you aside, set you apart from, from your competition or at least it can help you close the gap a little bit with the ones that are doing it right right now so that's our the four um the four uh, uh points that we're discussing with um the SWOT analysis again the internal things uh the internal factors that we can control the strengths and weaknesses and now we're going to cover the other two bottom ones the opportunities and threats those are external external factors and those are the ones that we usually can't control so let's get in uh, opportunities so we're gonna try to solve this question, the same approach as before. So for the opportunities, what elements are in our environment that we can take advantage from, okay? What elements are in our environment we can take advantage from? So we'll try to answer that. So first thing is um, for opportunities is uh, our product is trending. So all of a sudden we are in the position where our, you know, that one thing that we're doing or there's a, a market trend that, you know, all of a sudden that we're just so lucky that that product that we are just doing or that's one thing that is really similar to what we're doing or that capacity that we have with the machines that we have or the services that we provide that we can adapt that to a trending uh, product. And then all of a sudden we are gonna start, you know, getting into that bus and selling more. 
you know, like if, like if you see, um, you know, sometimes those uh, retailers where all of a sudden these uh, spinners, you know, those little things that uh, got you either attached to the cell phone or the kids were playing with to, you know, to get a little more uh, focus their attention when they get distracted and, and whatnot. You know, I mean, people had them everywhere. They had them on the, the retail stores and the Midwest, all the way to the East Coast and the West Coast and on the beach. And they were just selling about everywhere. So if uh, you happen to be able to manufacture those and then you can get in that wagon, well, then the, you have a product that is trending, you have a product that is selling. Okay, uh, the same way if you are a re retailer and you need uh, to keep a pulse on what's trending out there. And then all of a sudden you know that there's a new thing in the market coming up and there's getting a lot of it's getting a lot of uh, press and a lot of uh, advertising you know and all those things well why sh you know shouldn't you have it is that something that goes well with uh, you know your mix of products that you have for your business well that's an opportunity you need to get in there and and try to get those products that are currently trending um, is it a growing economy you know, uh, they uh, like right now, as we're speaking right now, the uh, unemployment rates are like lowest ever, you know, particularly here in, in Minnesota and the Midwest. They're the lowest ever. So it's a growing economy. There's a lot of job openings. Uh, you know, businesses are, are having to fight harder for employees. They're starting to pay more per hour for employees uh, just even to get them started just because uh, the need is out there. So it's a growing economy. Uh, you know, people have, uh, you know, there's more people that are having jobs right now. They're making more. Well, they're going to also get a little more relaxed and they're going to start spending more. Is that good for your industry? Absolutely. So can you take advantage of a growing economy? Always, right? Uh, competitor closes. So you've been in the business for a while and then your competitor, for whatever reason, you know, they're not doing well in business. Maybe it's a personal, um, you know, decision. They decided to retire. They're moving Whatever the case might be, but your competition is, is closing. Is that an opportunity for you? Absolutely. You need to be paying attention what's going on in your industry. You need to be paying attention what's happening in your area if you have a retail store or a uh, you know, physical location. And if you are in the digital world, well, you definitely need to be kind of watching for what's happening because your competition is coming from everywhere. It's not just local anymore. Uh, it can be somebody from California when you're in New York or vice versa. Maybe you're in Minneapolis and... Your competition is coming from Florida, okay? Uh, but again, uh, once a competitor, competitor closes, then that's a great opportunity for you to focus on, on what it is to, to grow your business. So that, again, that's something you can control, whether they close or not. Uh, but what you can control is to be aware of that uh, happening so you can develop a strategy to capture, you know, right away those clients and uh, increase your uh, customer base. Are there any new laws that you can take advantage you know, is there like a new uh, trade agreement with another, for instance, another country? Well, can you start exporting? Can you um, get, a, you know, import with a lower, you know, at a lower cost for your business? Do you get a new incentives uh, for, you know, for producing certain kind of goods or for hiring, you know, I don't know, uh, uh, minorities or, you know, whatever the case might be? Are you providing a service that you, you will get an extra incentive from your county, from your local um, local government, or even from the federal government? Okay, so new laws are changing all the time. It's your job to stay on top of that. And if you don't know how, then you can always talk to an expert. You know, you can talk to a lawyer, you can go to a, a, a center of information, uh, and there's like many of those for like small businesses, uh, for minorities, and you know, different ones uh, all across uh, different areas and different states. So you need to pay attention and you need to start really watching for for that. Uh, are there any new technologies? Is there a new uh, updated uh, you know platform for you to to have your website develop? Are you making apps and all of a sudden they came up with a new version of iPhone you know XYZ or the new uh, smartphone uh, or Google Android um, you know XYZ version? Is your uh, your website is your app ready for it is that a new technology is it a new opportunity for you to jump into the market and start customizing website for your customers is it an opportunity for you to you know if there's a new uh, customer relationship management that comes out and that is getting so much traction because it's so much better is there a new technology that allows you to put uh, your marketing on autopilot is there a new technology that helps you uh, you know produce more goods uh, with the same amount of uh, labor 
or even less amount of labor, but it yields more product, for instance. So can you do that? Um, should you be paying attention to that? Should you be reinvesting? Well, if you don't keep up with technology, technology is going to surpass you. And believe me that your competition, believe me when I say that your competition is just working as hard and maybe work, working harder than you to get to where you want to be. And if you just don't uh, really work hard and, and you don't keep on top of this, then uh, those opportunities might become uh, a threat which we'll talk soon okay but uh, uh what i recommend for people is to read the news uh, always you know uh, you don't have to spend hours watching the news but you can just kind of look at the the news that are related to your industry you can subscribe to uh, you know to rss uh, where you can get the information that you need from sources that you trust and so forth you need to be looking for opportunities you know, keep an eye on the news, um, learn how to take advantage of any opportunities and, and that is uh, work, uh, what is, you know, find out what is working and, and then just kind of jump in and, and take advantage of that. Um, now we're going to talk about threats and for the threats we, we look at, and again, these are external, external uh, factors. So those are the things that we can't uh, control and that we can't change. Uh, and the, tr the answer we try to solve here is uh, what external elements can distress our business, okay? It might not make us close, but it can definitely make us change. Or in some cases, it might be such a dramatic threat that maybe you will just be out of business, okay? So these are harder to see because uh, sometimes we just get comfortable where we're at and we're into this day-by-day, uh, -day putting out fires, focusing on, on what's urgent and not so much on what's important. So what happens if and that's the, the kind of mindset that we, we have to have. To, to have. If we keep uh, an eye on, on the things that we can control, then uh, we probably have to have to, happen, to, have, to have this uh, mindset. Okay, what happens if this happens to my business? Okay, so what happens if my product is not trending? Well, why do you keep making it? You know, uh, are you um, having enough feedback with your customers? Are you asking them? How uh, they're, are they satisfied with the product, the service, the quality, the price? Um, do they have new challenges? Is the generation uh, that, you're, that your, your customers are now, are they looking at things in the same way? How are they fulfilling their needs? Maybe your product is not relevant to them anymore. So maybe that product is no longer trending. You need to find a new product. And there's actually a class that talks about the different type of products and the different uh, stages and in cycles for different products so you need to have a good uh, healthy mix of products so you don't all of a sudden have all the products that are just not selling anymore uh, so you need to keep a good balance for that but like the, what the important part here and the point being is that for for you to keep an eye on those threats is to keep a, a you know keep a constant pulse and look on you know how your product is doing how your sales are how are they comparing the versus the year before who entered the uh, you know the the the, uh, the marketplace or what new companies are out there that are your competition that weren't there before why are you not selling as many units as you forecasted uh, is there someone cheaper is there someone new in the area are they buying online are they being more aggressive with their marketing are they uh, having better um, search engine optimization you know better positioning are they using uh, search engine marketing uh, you know like you need to know what's going on is it a bad economy uh, that's another thread as well so like if it's a bad economy then um, you know is your business prepared for for a recession we saw that happening where many businesses just went down here like all of a sudden but some uh, businesses were resilient and and they made it through they were like a uh, recession proofed uh, business so if it's a bad economy well do you have enough reserves are you uh, having a healthy uh, you know uh, p l a healthy company where you're building again like like I say your savings where you have um, in, you know you're con constantly reinvesting in new technology where you're investing on your company culture where you're reinvesting on on equipment uh, and training on your employees so they're always up to date with what's going on okay so sometimes uh, the solution for a bad economy is not just to lay off workers or to close companies, but it's to reinvent yourself, is to be able to acquire new skills, is being able to see, uh, you know, those challenges that exist because uh, there's a lot of people that make fortunes uh, during bad economies, that is for sure. New competitor, 
is there a new competitor out there? You know, do you need to pay attention to that? Uh, you probably don't need to freak out, I would say, right? Um, unless they're like super great and so much bigger and they cater to the same uh, niche market that you're going after. But if they are not, well, maybe you need to at least recognize and realize that they're there and they are gonna take a share of that market that you already have. So if uh, there's a new competitor, well, what do you need to do to prepare for that? Uh, you know, what are your uh, next, are you adjusting your sales forecast? Are you adjusting your inventory? Are you talking to your salespeople? Are you giving them additional training again? Are you uh, being able to adjust your pricing or to focus on the providing better, better service and better experiences for your customer? So there are ways to mitigate these threats and we'll see that in a, in a couple minutes. Uh, but it's important to pay attention to even new laws that can work against us. Just like there might be a new incentives for us to open a business or to get a loan uh, interest free, for instance, then uh, as a threat, then there might be new laws that are kind of raising taxes. And when, you know, the tax taxes are being raised, well, then uh, product costs more as well. And the, the end user, the customer, the final customer is going to have to pay more. So maybe uh, sales are gonna get contracted a little bit, you know, is that a, a law of offer and demand? And well, new laws are definitely impacting uh, businesses in, as an opportunity or threats. And there's so much you can do about that. You can lobby and everything, but uh, you know, in many cases you can be part of uh, uh, just being a company that is uh, out there reacting to what's happening. Uh, the idea with threats is trying to be proactive and seeing you know, if there's a new law that is uh, that they're working on, maybe try to reach out to your legislators, try to uh, be part of, uh, you know, your chamber of commerce or, you know, a particular uh, association that represents your industry and try to, as a group, try to see what can be done and try to, to be able to sort through those threats that might impact your business in a negative way. New technologies. Are there new technologies, technologies that all of a sudden are just going to to make you obsolete, okay? So for instance, uh, let's say uh, you have a, a pharmacy and you're still full, uh, filling prescriptions by hand, you're making phone calls, well, there are technologies out there that can make the phone calls for you, place reminders to your customers, whether they haven't come back or the, their or next order is due or that their next prescription is ready and they save you time, save you labor. Um, and it can be so personalized that people might actually think that you're actually really leaving voicemails to them or you know co communications of that sort so there are new technologies out there that all of a sudden if you don't have access because you don't have that financial muscle then all of a sudden you are going to become obsolete and those two new technologies again are going to run you over and and it can be a threat because if your competition actually um, see new technologies as an opportunity and not as a threat, then that can really work against you. So you need to keep paying attention. Now, how do you fix it? Okay, how do you fix it? Well, your job as a business owner, as an entrepreneur or an entrepreneur, in many cases is to transform threats into opportunities. Okay, so that's your job. You need to, to have, be able to, you need to be able to have that vision, that long-term vision, this, um, say uh, 25,000 uh, feet above uh, eagle vision from, from, you know, get the perspective, like from, from, the, from the sky and, and try to see things before they're actually happening, which is not really easy, but you need to be able to have, um, you know, if you have a good understanding of your industry and experience, then you're gonna see the, the ups and downs of the markets and experience over, you know, past experiences as well. So how do we fix it? Well, uh, if your product is not trending, well, maybe you need to look for products that are trending. Maybe you need to update the design. Maybe you need to find what is that actually you know relevant for the cons consumers and that. So, for instance, if you're into like the food business, uh, you each have a restaurant, you have a, a retail store, you have a convenience store, you're part of a gym. Maybe you are into health and wellness. Well, maybe that's a business that is trending. People are trying to find ways to look to look better, to feel healthier, to feel better, and to to have a better quality of life. Well, is that a niche? Is that an opportunity for you? Well, then, then you might want to look for opportunities like that. You see that uh, there's a bad economy right now. Well, uh, you know, the bad economy is, like I said, there are businesses that are recession-proof, uh, businesses such as uh, the second-hand stores. You know, like, look around, you know, Goodwill in the Midwest is just amazing. They're building brand new stores all over the place. They're popping everywhere. And these business models have been replicated. They're creating new jobs for people that are kind of getting back into the job market. They're getting new skills. They're getting second chances and opportunities. At the same time, uh, the environment is, is uh, get, you know, getting taken care. 
you know clothes are in great condition are being recycled people are using it you know in all days so there's these are like recession proof industries um, so again how do you fix it well then you need to look for opportunities you need to find that you need to get creative it's your job again to uh, transform threats into opportunities what if you have a new competitor well then uh, create services that are difficult to imitate okay you need to focus on intangibles okay your service the experience bots can't uh, duplicate experiences for a customer I gave you that example again like if you if you sell insurance and your customers uh, house burns and they call your office and you have an automated answering machine and they have to go through like you know many options just to talk to a bot to get their information and have somebody calling them back well wouldn't that be better if at that moment if it's an emergency they call you and then or you know that expert is that that human voice that it will actually be able to relate with their problem and and tell them hey it's okay I'm happy that you guys are okay you know we're don't worry about it uh, we're gonna be able to figure to sort through this uh, we'll help you you know right away uh, you know take care of whatever needs to be done to to make sure that you guys spend the night at a safe place and things like that okay so so that you can't you can't replicate just with a bot um, a person uh, have that power that human interaction can you find a point of differentiation with that one to turn that thread into um, an advantage for you okay that's, that's definitely for sure now is there a new laws new taxes for instance well uh, if there are no monopolies well then diversify your business don't put all the eggs in one basket okay maybe try to find four different pricing strategies uh, try to to be more sensi sensible to or more sensitive to your customers uh, you know packets if uh, there are new uh, laws and taxes that are affecting your end customer well maybe they're gonna be a little bit um, you know more uh, stressed as far as uh, spending maybe they won't they won't they don't want to buy like such a larger packages maybe they're gonna be looking to buy uh, you know smaller portions are you ready for that maybe they won't be able to take a, you know sign up for a one-year um, program but maybe they might be able to sign you know in a month-to-month -month basis Okay, you need to look for ways to even incentivize uh, your customers to to feel better about their spending even when the economy is tighter for instance you can create loyalty programs or reward programs for your customers so then when they reach certain thresholds certain goals for you with your business in spending or in visits or in you know searches or in clicks or whatever you know you give them something uh, without affect, affecting your bottom line but you give them incentive to keep coming back and all of a sudden you're winning that battle it's just like one by one you're you're working and helping them out and that's the important thing that you show them that you care that you understand what their problematic is is there new technologies how do you fix that well you need to invest you need to invest and educate yourself and your team depending if you're an entrepreneur or an entrepreneur but this is the time this is the uh, age of information so if uh, like they say uh, Toffel said if the um, you know the the, the uh, analphabets of the past were those who couldn't read. Now the naf the analphabet of today is uh, the one that doesn't know how to learn. That's pretty strong, right? Because you need in this a uh, you know age uh, in in this uh, stage of uh, you know 20, 2017, 2018, uh, you know in this um, century. With the amount of the vast amount of information that is just being released every day, it's just amazing. So you need to keep investing and in educating yourself. And again, congratulations for for being here, for spending this time. That I hope it really helps you, and that I know if you do your homework, you're gonna see uh, how that benefits your company and it, may, it helps you out. You know, live that dream uh, reality for you. What if uh, what if uh, there is um, you know a, a low entry barrier? for for the, that industry you're in well maybe you can create an access to a vip club that nobody else has or maybe you can just live stream only for fans so you can create spaces for areas where you know people are struggling to to get because it's so easy to have so much competition but the more that you can differentiate your services and the more that you can differentiate your products and based on the experiences and and just giving them an, an exceptional um experience with your product with the process 
from the moment they start buying to the moment uh, they use the product and even the post service like I have said before then uh, you're actually you know have gonna have better chances to to succeed in this uh, the next uh, uh, slide here we're talking about uh, this little chart It's a simple chart that quickly shows you here uh, how how you can actually do this analysis on your own and that will be the homework of today okay you have to fill it out and then just like anything uh, the more you do it the better you get at it so you can just uh, you know print screen this or just kind of find one or I can you know you contact me on my uh, website jlbmedia.com and then just fill out the contact form and request uh, this um, format then I can email it to you no problem um, the more that you start actually having this about your business maybe just do it with your team have a third party have a customer go to your business or someone that understands your industry and actually tell you what they think are your strengths and what are your weaknesses because what you see as a strength it might not be something that you're doing really well for somebody else and that might give you a different perspective on your business and maybe something that you see as a, a weakness maybe uh, you haven't really uh, thought of how you can actually turn it into a strength and maybe uh, having somebody else with a different you know set of eyes with a different industry or a different perspective or with a different experience can actually help you uh, see something you didn't see before so the homework for now until the next class is that you fill this out and then you find and think about your strengths and for each strength uh, and each weakness and each opportunity and each uh, threat then you write a plan for it okay so that will be the ultimate goal but at least at a glance you should be able to tell what are the main points you can start working on so you can start incorporating that into your uh, you know like your uh, long-term plan and and you know start creating your list of uh, urgent activities but also your important activities especially the important ones those that you need to make then those that you need to do even uh, when you don't think you have the time because those uh, you need to do them before they become urgent but again remember the, the more you do it the better you get at it so finally you need to practice and dedicate time to think and evaluate your business in an ongoing basis okay it is not right to just do this uh, exercise just once and then you forget about it you need to do it every it depends on your business it depends on your rotation if it's very seasonal well you might probably want to do it only once a year but if you're open year round well maybe you need to get the post like every three months maybe you need to do it every every month okay uh, because things change and sometimes in some markets some things change a lot uh, faster than in others uh, so you need to do this on an ongoing basis this is a never-ending process and remember you can use your team those are more resources for you so for every retail business that you have ask someone else to help you see things with a different set of eyes again uh, I think that is important to to remember I want to uh, thank you for uh, following us on to this uh, fifth class SWOT analysis and again uh, you're here to improve your um, your skills and uh, we welcome you that you're a part of this uh, community of entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs and and we hope that uh, all these resources really help you you know gain that edge and, and bring you uh, up to speed with what's going on right now and, and that you can improve your business and and also get an opportunity to 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 live your dreams you know you have a passion you have a heart for something that you love that you're good at well we love to help you out with that again if you want to contact me my name is Juan Yerena these are the different um, uh, platforms that you can reach me at I'll appreciate your uh, feedback and any comments I particularly like to get those comments on via email by going to our website again uh, jlbmedia.com and then go to the contact form because that way I get my emails organized so I can respond faster to the emails that go through my contact form because they get higher priority that you know like other emails that sometimes I take me longer to to get because again I just try to to um, you know have a, a good efficient use of my time as well uh, so having said this I want you to to uh, just stay in tune and I will see you in the next class